Hi there, we're gonna take a look at the internal assessment criteria for the new biology syllabus. Now, this document that you'll, look, you'll be looking at here is not actually the same one that's provided by the IB biology syllabus. I'm assuming you're kind of familiar with that already, in which case you know that there are five uh, bits that they're actually looking at, which are separated into personal engagement, exploration, analysis, evaluation, and communication. I'm going to focus on the three typical things that could also be applied to a lab report, which would be the exploration, uh, the analysis, and the evaluation section. For the personal engagement, that's going to be you know, your one major project, but you can kind of approach any lab with some level of personal engagement. Also, the way that I've separated this out, um, you'll see here, for example, personal engagement. Uh, you can ignore these numbers, but the numbers that I'm using I'm assuming this is going to be used for a, a lab report to prepare a student for their actual big internal assessment. So a smaller lab report, you can kind of pick and choose different pieces from this entire thing. So the way this works is um, actually for the real internal assessment, anything in this top row up here kind of belongs in the top point section. And it so turns out for personal engagement for the actual IA, it's actually out of two marks. So these three things kind of add together to uh, give the total of two marks. So if you're, if you're hitting the top in all three of these, then you're going to get the maximum number of marks for personal engagement. And this is pretty self-explanatory. So maybe in a later date, as we get closer to the IA, uh, when that's going to be submitted, we can talk about that in more detail. Communication is overall in general to um, for the final IA, it's out of four marks, but I've split up each component into kind of a hierarchy here. This is pretty self-explanatory as well too, and in general, um, if the rest of this is looking okay, you're probably okay with the communication part. So again, uh, today my focus is going to be on how to work out the exploration part, the analysis part, and the evaluation part. So the typical pieces that would go together in an investigation, which include the aim and research question and all the variables. That's the exploration part. And then you have the analysis, which is the recording of data, the analysis of the, of the data, any statistical tests, averaging, graphing, um, considering uncertainties, all of that's going to go here. The analysis of the of the statistical test is going to go in here. And then the final section for any typical lab report is the evaluation bit, which includes the conclusion here. Um, conclusion as it relates to the scientific evidence that has existed before, and then actual evaluation of the experimental method itself. And improvements that can be made to the suggestions that you've identified and uh, okay so let's just start up here at the top we might have to split this into two different sections i'm not going to read what's in up here in this top row so much but i'm going to draw more attention to the additional information boxes that i put down here i don't know if we can discuss every single one i'm going to point out a few some of them are really self-explanatory but um Basically, all of this stuff up here is language that can be found in the biology syllabus. And all this information down here with these little boxes are things that have been found on additional teacher resources through the OCC and any other things that are available for any biology teachers out there. And stuff that I've heard from other teachers and seen from different areas online for tips and tricks on how to actually do this properly. So, yeah. Okay, so we're aiming for the top here for all of these. By the way, for the real IA, exploration is worth six total points. So it doesn't match up with what I've got here. But theoretically, if you can hit the top mark in each of these columns going down like this, you should be uh, well on your way for the top mark of six possible points. So let's see, what do we need to do here? So overall, in your actual aim, your aim must be clear. It's got to have the independent and dependent variable in there. I would set up a table, and inside that table, you should have an explanation of how you're going to control all your controlled variables. You should have at least five controlled variables, I think. Um, try not to avoid to use the word avoid the word amount. So try to be specific with volume, etc., uh, mass, time. If you have concentrations, make sure those are expressed in the correct units: grams per milliliter, moles per dm cubed, etc. Um, 
let's see variables quantitative described i think that's okay and then your background research so some people set this up with like a research question and a few paragraphs that give the idea so i'm thinking about a small lab report but if you prepare these things in each of your lab reports then you'll be well on your way to doing to preparing your own independent uh internal investigation background information um, provided for the investigation is entirely appro appropriate and relevant and enhances the understanding. Um, make sure you have some decent citations in there, uh, scientific references. Uh, if you want to include a hypothesis, that's up for debate if people want to put a hypothesis in there or not. If you do, make sure it's backed up. But you want to give some of the background to this. And in your research question, if this is a full IA, uh, this is where you can talk about your personal engagement with everything as well too. But for now, uh, just make sure you've, you've set up your experiment and your explanations um, have a scientific biological basis that's appropriate for the IB biology level that you're actually studying. If you have a table that has all your variables set out, so I put the independent variable, the dependent variable, and the controlled variable, and next to it, I make students do a how and a why for each of these, and they really have to justify uh, how they're going to control those variables and why those variables need to be controlled. And that will help to feed into this next section, which is your actual plan. So a lot of things can be seen here from the variables you've identified and, and from the actual plan that you've written out. Um, have you taken into consideration all of the significant factors that could influence the relevance, reli reliability, and sufficiency of the collected data? If you've identified numerous controlled variables and describe how you're going to control them because they could affect your dependent variable, then you're going to be doing a pretty good job there. So let's look at some of these extra bullet points. Minimum is five by five. So I think most teachers talk about this five measurements or five readings with at least three runs for each. I think you should be doing five runs for each. That gives you multiple trials. Now you can talk about precision. You can create error bars. You can calculate standard deviation and you can show this graphically and then you'll be able to run statistical tests like a t-test as well too. So you mess this up, you basically ruin uh, your chances of success in other parts as well too. So plan it out well. Enough data for statistical tests. Have you considered an appropriate range? If it's pHs, are you only looking at like pH 5 to 8? Or should you be looking at pH 1 to 7 if you're looking at a specific type of enzyme? So plan that out carefully. Have you chosen correct instruments for actually measuring these things? And are there better tools out there than the ones that you're planning on using? Okay. Is your scale, is it, uh, does it measure to the the correct number of decimal places that'll give you more accurate readings instead of uh, less accurate readings by the way precision and accuracy are different things so make sure you know how to use these words uh, separately as well too in that variables table i've mentioned the how and the why so i would throw that in there do you need to address more controlled variables uh, how are you going to control these controlled variables uh, make sure there's enough detail for your experiment to be reproducible meaning someone else should be able to follow your method and be able to do the same experiment and end up with the same results that's the idea this is how science works can you include a diagram uh, a nice hand-drawn stick figure diagram that will make it very easy to uh, reproduce your actual experiment and has everything labeled clearly there could you even emphasize the importance of the controlled variables on the particular diagram that you're actually uh, that you've actually created as well too all right and this part here is safety issues ethical issues environmental issues you got to do a little bit more than just say no animals were harmed in the process and no dangerous dangerous chemicals were used in the process uh, get into detail about this have a special section written up about safety issues as they relate to you as the experimenter not just sharp objects but any types of chemicals the concentrations of the chemicals that are safe for you and the people that are around you. If you dump those chemicals down the sink, what effect is that going to have? Have you researched all of that? Are you working with live organisms? Um, you, should, you should talk about how you tried everything in your possible, yeah, what am I trying to say? 
how you've tried everything possible to avoid using live organisms. Can you, re can you replace those live organisms with tissue samples instead? Can you get stuff from the butcher? Can you just buy chicken legs to do your samples? Is there a reason why you had to use live organisms? And if there is absolutely no way to replace them, uh, what types of organisms have you chosen? And how are you minimizing their stress and suffering and hopefully not causing them to end up in death that's going to be a big issue um, you are doing great work but your work according to the ib is not cutting edge and therefore your sacrifice of animals is not worth it just in the learning process overall for the benefit of mankind oh that was that was deep but uh, that's actually what ib says so think about that no kittens or cats should be sacrificed in this there's a whole big document uh, provided by the ib so check that out uh, IB animal experimentation document. You can find it online as well too. Any chemicals, anything that you're exposing them to, if they are live animals, it should be something that they would normally be exposed to. So for example, I don't know, uh, if you're using water fleas or using wood lice, you wouldn't be like, I want to see what nicotine does to wood lice because in the normal environment, uh, wood lice are not walking around smoking cigarettes. At least I haven't seen that. If you have, send me a picture. No, don't do that. Don't do that. That's horrible stuff. All right. We're going to stop here and then pick up with analysis in the next one.